Hey everybody, it's Cloud Connection here with a different kind of Lupon video as Lupon Zero just ended and I figured why don't I sit down and record my initial thoughts. I am planning to cover this for the Legacy of Lupon retrospective, but we have a lot to get through before we uh, get to Lupon Zero, so, and I wanted to just put my perspective on it right now. I'm sure some of this will change when I analyze it later on, but, well, let's see. I gotta say right up front, I was initially kind of skeptical about this when it was announced in October. I, I know a lot of people were excited for it, but I was sort of against the idea of it just from the beginning. You know, we have little glimpses here and there, and, you know, one special in particular, Episode Zero, to discuss how they all met. I don't mind those, but as far as where they came from, how they grew up, I just didn't want a series to be treated like, oh, this is supposed to be the definitive origins of Loop on the Third. But in the build-up, the trailers that were released, I sort of realized that wasn't what they were going for. It looks like, if anything, this is more an unconnected prequel to Part 1, maybe Part 2, and that's really because it has that same carefree, rebellious attitude as the original parts, just with pacing and structure more like Parts 4 through 6. But even that connection isn't that strong, because really, you can watch Loop on Zero without any knowledge of the series beforehand, and you can understand it. It's mostly pretty standalone. Whether or not you should see it is a different story, and uh, warning, I am going to be going into spoilers here, so if you just want my quick, spoiler-free thoughts, I would say that it's a solid and entertaining show that missed a lot of potential in the overall I guess the story it was trying to tell. I think it's a good bit of entertainment, and I think Lupin fans will really like it, but it's not gonna completely shatter your expectations of what Lupin should be or, or is or anything like that. And for an origin story, that's kind of missing a lot. So to dive a little deeper into the narrative, and again, we're moving into spoiler territory now, you know, this is not the first time we've seen a younger Lupin. Um, I think this series actually takes direct inspiration from a specific arc of the manga called the Confession series, which are four chapters from the original manga release that focused on some of Lupin's backstory. And it's in the era where he's becoming a thief, where he's sort of living up to the expectations of his ancestors, you know, that kind of stuff. But you don't actually need to know those manga chapters in order to get this series. Actually, it only ties loosely into them, only one of the chapters is adapted as a story, and even then, it's pretty loose. <laughs> and Lupin Zero is very standalone. As I mentioned, you can watch this with no prior knowledge of anything, and you can follow along. I have thought it was going to be a lot more tied to a singular narrative, you know, kind of like how a, a TV special or a movie would be, but actually, this is fairly episodic. The series actually does juggle a couple of different stories, and these stories are good, but I don't think it was the right direction to take with this series. Like, you have Lupin and Jigen meeting for the first time as children, then they're competing on a train when Jigen's hired to protect a treasure, and then slowly it introduces this narrative involving the United States Army and weapons that they've stockpiled, which another group takes for their own and plans to aim directly at Tokyo. But meanwhile, you've also got Arsene Lupin and Lupin II challenging their grandson slash son. But the thing is, there is just too much in this show to really, really get to and really dissect in six episodes. I think this series could have been far better if it were trimmed down or expanded. If it focused on something more laser specific throughout the whole thing, like either you know, Lupin rebelling against his family's inheritance's legacy, and focusing on that for a, you know, either a movie-length TV special, or maybe like a four-episode series, or go the other way and have a mini 12 or 13-episode series, like a moment called Fujiko Mine, where you could explore a lot more of those concepts in a little more detail, and have room for these episodic stories. I think maybe the idea was to sort of show Lupin as a child before he really took on the moniker of Lupin III, and I get that, but it doesn't really contribute a whole lot to what we know about him. This is a more childlike Lupin, obviously, he is very dopey and wide-eyed and curious, but he is also a thief with a heart of gold, and you know, we've seen that characterization so often that it's just like, well, yeah, he is this. How did he get to this? I don't think the show really explored that well enough. But I do think that Lupin Zero does a solid job with its characters, or at least with Lupin and Jigen. 
You've got Lupin not wanting to follow in the path that's outlined for him and trying to make his own way, which is great. I love seeing that, you know, carefree and rebellious, but also, at the end of the day, kind-hearted spirit in him. And Jigen acts as his rational counterbalance, a tough, no-nonsense, hitman kid. <laughs> Uh, but he, you know, they're both still kids. That's the important part, I think, of Lupin Zero, with the characterizations of Lupin and Jigen. They're not afraid to show that they are kids. They enjoy a lot of childish things. Uh, maybe Lupin more so than Jigen, but you can see that they're younger, they're less experienced. And I like that. I, I like seeing that dynamic. The other dynamic I really like, or I guess more specifically, I like the angle they went with, is Lupin's family, you know, Arsene Lupin and his dad Lupin II. Because this is one of the very rare instances, I think, where the series really explores the idea that Lupin's family upbringing is really messed up. I really love their depiction of Arsene Lupin as this crazy, insane old man who is willing to trick and deceive his grandson and put him in terrible situations. That's insane, which in a way makes sense. I do like that they're not going for a flattering picture of Arsene Lupin here. And it also ties into why would Lupin not want to follow this? Because his grandfather is a maniac. And it's not like his dad is any better. He's stealing dangerous weapons and knowing that he's also putting his son in danger. I liked that angle and I just wish they followed through on it a little better. You know, the whole story with this uh, singer girl Yoko that Lupin and Jigen rescue in the first episode and cross paths with later on. Now her storyline is one that I really think got screwed up because they didn't have enough time to dedicate to it. But I don't know, the way her story ended just felt like, I don't know, it just felt like a waste. That being said, for what is here and what we did get, again, I think it's solid entertainment. I really like the voice actors that they got. I think Tasuku Hatanaka is a pretty good young loop on the third. It, it did admittedly take me a little while to get used to his voice, but I think that's just because we haven't seen a younger loop on yet, and so obviously he's going to be a lot more erratic, a lot more childlike. I mean, that's the, kind of the point. But I think it is a good performance. Shunsuke Takeuchi does a really great job emulating Daisuke Jigen's deep, stern voice. I think maybe, I, I don't know exactly how old the characters are supposed to be, and maybe I guess his deep voice does make sense, but it was a little jarring at first. Still, a good performance from them. And I am also super, super happy to see Toshio Furukawa back, voicing Lupin the second. Now, you might already know this, but he voiced Lupin in the Fuma Conspiracy, which was the movie, if you recall, where they didn't hire the regular voice cast back, and instead run in a bunch of replacements. And Furukawa was the person who replaced Yasuo Yamada, at least for that special. But when he was announced to play Lupin the Second in Lupin Zero, and he tweeted about it, it was great to see a lot of Japanese fans voice their support and say, Hey, I loved you in Fuma Conspiracy. I'm glad you're back to the series. Because he does have a lot of great characteristics to voice a Lupin character. And, you know, obviously he's a little too old to play Lupin the Third. Having him play Lupin the Second, I think, is genius. And the style, too. I mean, this anime does look really, really good. It's got that part one drawing style, but also the bloom and the diffusion that you would have remembered from part four. But yeah, this show looks really good. It's well made. I just wish it had a tighter focus. And I know I'm kind of repeating myself there, but that's really just how I feel. I think the individual storylines are fine. I think most of them are pretty well executed, but they're nothing particularly special. And the thing is, you know, this examination of Lupin's family life, why he chose to become a thief in the end, is interesting as a fan. It might not be engaging if you're unfamiliar with the series, though. I don't think it's anything extraordinary, but if you are a Lupin fan and you have been missing out on this, I would say give it a watch. It's got enough good moments, and it is fun. Who knows if I'll feel the same way when I revisit this a couple of years from now at this point, honestly. But until then, this is Cloud Connection, hoping you have a great day, great night, great evening, whenever, and take care.